Hello and welcome to another edition of For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy. Our friends from Core Plus Credit Union are back. Susan Dombrowski, you were here uh, for a short while back. Was it maybe a year ago or so? Or? About a year ago. We were talking oh. about our participation with Eastern Connecticut Athletics. Well, welcome back. Thank you, Sean. So for those who are, are unfamiliar with Core Plus, give us a little background on it. Sure thing. Uh, we are a community credit union. We're located entirely in Eastern Connecticut, and we serve members who live in New London and Wyndham counties. Uh, you might have heard me just say members. We don't have uh, customers at the credit union. They are members. They're actually owners of our organization. And uh, whenever someone from a credit union com comes on, I usually ask the question, what is the difference? Because people, for some reason, don't understand. It's not a lot of difference, but the difference between a credit union and a bank. Yep. It's entirely philosophical. Um, you come to our branches, and it looks like a bank. There's a teller line. There's a vault. There's a drive through It looks very much like you would expect. What makes us entirely different is our philosophy. Credit unions, uh, by their nature, are not-for-profit organizations. Now, we're not for charity, but we are for service. Um, that is our key distinction, what makes us different. And to be a member, can, can anybody be a member? Absolutely. Okay. Anybody in good standing is allowed to be a member of the credit union. We are open to the entire community. Some credit unions are still closed. They're SEG-based, which is a select employee group. Okay. They may be just closed to those people within that organization. Like but Navy, you know, federal. Navy Fed, exactly, right. is, is an example of that. You have to have served in the Army or have a family member who's in there, the, the Navy or the Armed Forces, um, whereas we are open to the entire Eastern Connecticut community. And uh, people seem, uh, at least to me anyway, just from casual conversation, people seem to like to lean more. A bank almost is sort of a, a negative connotation in a way. Would you agree? Just with what's been happening in, the, in recent times? Absolutely. Um, you can't go on the news without hearing bad things about the big banks, these evil big banks. I'm not even really sure who they are because they don't really affect us too much here in eastern Connecticut. Rather, we're fortunate that we do have some nice, really um, community-oriented local banks. But on a whole and nationally, a bank is sort of a four-letter word. Right. Um, credit unions are not. We are all about people helping people. And the fact that we're a not-for-profit organization really helps to cement that. We're not looking to get rich on somebody's car payment or their mortgage or their personal loans. But rather, we want to put the finances in people's hands that they need. And, you know, all you have to do is... Remember that banks, some, had to be bailed out, right? Yeah. Whereas credit unions, it's very community-based, very community-oriented. You said you, we serve Eastern Connecticut. You're not, Core Plus isn't interested in serving somebody in the Midwest. There's other credit unions out there that will take care of them. Absolutely. You're Eastern Connecticut. Yep. Um, and part of our charter is that we live and serve in our community. So, you know, part of our marketing tagline is uh, community trusted. We live here, too, and that's important. You know, you come to any of our branches, you're going to meet the same people working in the branch that you might see at your kid's Little League or you might see at the grocery store or you might see them, you know, out to dinner on a Saturday night. We all live here. The, uh, the nature of banking, and I use that in terms for both banking, yep. banks and credit union, is changing. It's, it's, as technology is changing, people are certainly doing their banking online more. They're using their app they're using at least the ATM and, you know, if they don't have to necessarily see a person or a teller inside, they don't, not that, they, not that you wouldn't want them to, but that, I mean, times are changing, right? You're absolutely correct. Yeah. Uh, we have 22,000 members throughout Eastern Connecticut. We see about six of them on any given day, more than that, but yeah. um, because you're right, people are doing, you know, they've got direct deposit. They are have us on their phone, they're using the ATM, they're doing online banking. We found that people aren't coming in to cash their paycheck on a Friday anymore, but what they are doing is coming in and saying, I have a question. You know, I'm not sure what to do about, and that's where we can step in and help them to figure out what is going wrong, what we can help them with, and what steps they might want to take to better their situation. It certainly is convenient to be able to take a picture of your check and have that be deposited. Uh, is there anything as a human being you would say, are we getting away from the, you know, being a civilized society, socializing, that sort of a thing? Um, or does it make your job easier? You know, it's it's a plus, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I go out to the branches and I'm out visiting, taking pictures for publicity and things like that. And it's always, not surprising, but pleasantly surprising, I guess I would say, that our branch manager looks up and they see somebody coming in the door. Hey, Mary, welcome back. Nice to see you again. How was your vacation? We, because we live here, we know our members. Right. 
Um, and it does get a little disconcerting when we don't see somebody for a while. We might say, Mary, gosh, we haven't seen you in two or three months. Where have you been? Well, that's when we learn that maybe she had a family illness or something that's taken her away. People do come in just to be social. Yeah. Um, and they, they like that personal touch. For as much as I do with online banking and using technology in my own family situation, I still have questions and I still want to go to talk to somebody. I think that as each generation comes up, they're more familiar and comfortable with new tech out technology and they'd be more willing to embrace it. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, we have a really hard time with getting some of our older members to use the online banking, to use the mobile. Yeah. Um, Old dog, new tricks, right? Exactly. But you know what? But it's always surprising that I look like at somebody like my dad, who is ultra high tech. Uh, he does not fit the demographic for the iPhone. <laughs> but That's he's, great. Yeah, he's, he's doing his online bill pay, you know? So um, it's whatever suits the person. And we don't ever want to tell somebody, no, you can't come and visit us. Do it online instead. We're there for our members. Everybody seems to have an app these days too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something we're trending towards. Mm -hmm. um, we're having big changes in 2016 and 17. Some are visual. Some our members are going to notice, um, such as our rebranding efforts this year. We've done new signage on all of our buildings. Um, we have a new logo that we're using. But some of it's behind the scenes. Some of it is just strictly the core processing, the, the big computer in the back room. Um, is, is changing and we have to keep up with technology. Right, and also a lot of places I see even the inside of the, the bank or the credit union is changing. It's more, it almost looks more futuristic now. It's not your standard five tellers, you know, that kind of thing, and then the other offices are over here. Absolutely, and that's a, a perfect example and you're welcome to join us for our grand reopening ceremony that we're having at our headquarters. We've just undergone that tra transformation. Um, we took our large lobby space, which was uh, very lovely but largely unused, and we've converted it instead to smaller offices with a closing door that any one of my colleagues can sit down with you and talk to you about, about your questions. You know what? It's, it looks less of a bank these days. Yeah. You know it's more, I mean? of a, um, more of a social setting. You know, let's sit down and, and talk about this together. Um, we have gone away from that solid barrier teller line yeah. um, to what we call a pod system. So it's more of a concierge relationship. You and I are going to take care of this transaction together. Because you know what? At the end of the day, it's your money. So that's important. Um, a lot of people might have concerns about security. Well, hang on. There's no more barrier there. Um, the machinery and the technology that we're using is actually more efficient, more accurate, and more secure than we had been in the past. Than the old, you know, got your keys on that little bungee thing on your arm and you open <laughs> yeah. up the drawer right. and, you know, you take out the 20 bucks to give to the member. What we're doing now is, is it's a lot faster and it's more efficient. Are there some things that are, that are mainstays that'll be there forever? Is there a vault and there's, a, and there's <laughs> got cash in it? I mean, something of a bank or a credit union will remain, Absolutely. I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, you know, members are always going to want to have that drive-through window right. because everybody appreciates convenience. And when you, do, when you don't need to come in and ask us questions, you're going to drive up, you're going to do your business through the window, chat with Barbara at the window, and then you're going to move on. Um, the vault, yep, there's a vault. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't want to say too much right. about that um, only, but, you know, we have people who manage those and, uh, you know, we got the guy who pulls up with the truck full of money on, you know, whatever day he does and, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, for all intents and purposes, banking is banking. Right. Um, is it, you mentioned some, some older members, is, is some of it daunting to some people? Um, you know, like you mentioned, some people, oh, we have a tough time teaching them or, or kind of steering them toward online, you know, new technology. Some people just aren't interested in, in getting on the computer for that matter. And know? that's fine. Yeah. You know what, we're always going to be there with a personal touch to, you know, to cash that check or to put money into your nephew's savings account, we will always have people there. Um, we will never, I don't ever foresee a situation where Core Plus will go entirely automated and people-less. Um, Robots, no? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not gonna see a, uh, yeah. the Bart character from the television commercials right. at our place. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, are you expanding? Do you continue to grow? Will it be branches coming elsewhere in, We're not, the, in the future? Uh, not planning on any. Yeah. Um, we have eight full service locations right now that runs pretty much all along the 395 corridor. Very from, convenient. Very yeah. convenient. From East Lyme to Putnam. Um, what's neat about two of our branches are located inside Walmart super centers. And those are up in the northeast corner in Putnam and Brooklyn. They have been specifically built to accommodate our banking situation. So they're completely set up for us. Uh, we're tenants in the Walmart. And the philosophy behind that is we can either depend on people to come and visit us at the credit union and hope to gain new members, new exposure in the community through that, 
or we can take advantage of the 20,000 people a day that walk into Walmart. Um, that is our perfect target demographic. Being a people's credit union, uh, we help people. So we're just looking to make those relationships to, you know, to get young adults into their first checking account, to put somebody through college, to get that reliable car that people need to get to their job. Um, that's what we're looking for. Our uh, previous president and CEO used to say something that I thought was pretty important. We would always rather do 10 $10,000 loans than one $100,000 loan. Not to say we won't write mortgages all day long throughout Eastern Connecticut, but those small loans are really what people need. They need the new roof on their house. They need that new back deck. Maybe they don't need a hot tub, but if you've got the resources. Who doesn't need a hot tub? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you've got reliable, affordable financing, that's something that the credit union can help you with. Boy, you're not kidding when you, boy, target audience, I'm putting it right in a Walmart. Yeah. Just in, by numbers alone, the people coming and yeah. going. But those are your regular, everyday Joes living and Janes living in eastern Connecticut. Absolutely. I mean, that's perfect, yep. right? And that's who we serve. Uh, we were originally founded in 1936 as the Teachers Credit Union. So for the longest time, we served teachers and municipal workers in the Norwich area. Um, about 15 years ago, they saw a need to, breach, to branch out to the entire community. That does involve changing our federal charter. So we are a federal credit union. Uh, we are fully insured through the NCUA up to $250,000 per account. And what that does is it just makes us accessible to more people. Um, people helping people truly is our philosophy. And uh, why not open yourself up to be available to more people in Eastern Connecticut, yeah. you know, not just lock yourself into, that's fantastic. Now, you were talking about a promotion that's coming up. Did you want to mention that before we wrap up the segment? I do. Uh, oh. We are celebrating a grand reopening of our Norwich branch, so that's located right next to, uh, interestingly enough, the Walmart in Norwich. <laughs> It'll be on Friday morning, September 9th at 8 a.m. We welcome the community to join us. Uh, we're in participation with the Greater Norwich Area Chamber. We'll be cutting a ribbon. Um, we'll have some great cupcakes coming. I'm so excited oh, about that. Nice. Never too early for cupcakes. No, no. <laughs> and it's a, it's a chance for us to show off the changes that we've made, um, but really what's more important is what's going to stay the same. Yeah, and I was getting ready to say come see the future of banking or, or credit unions, but it's really not the future of, it's the now. It's, it's, the hap now. it's happening it's, now. It's, it's happening now, exactly. So we will be trending towards making similar improvements in many of our other locations as time and money permits. One uh, Website, one more time for people to go and learn yeah, more. Yeah, www.coreplus.org. Susan Dabrowski, Director of Marketing for Core Plus Credit Union. Pleasure, as always, having you on the show. And Thanks, next Sean. segment, we're going to talk about uh, real estate loans, right? Absolutely. All right, we'll take a short break and come right back. I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Stay right there. Welcome back to For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy, still here with the fine folks from Core Plus Credit Union. For this segment, Barbara Zenjohn, she's the real estate lending manager, and it is her first time on the show, so welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, when you think real estate, you think the housing market, and for the longest time, we've heard that you know there have been problems, problems in the economy in general, but housing market specifically. But I would venture to say that things are looking up these days, aren't they? We are. We're seeing an increase in interest with our membership, um, kind of across the board. You know, all the age demographics. We're seeing our millennials looking at home ownership for the first time, doing their research up front. Um, all the way to baby boomers looking to purchase houses. So we're seeing a more positive outlook on the American dream, which was home ownership for such a long time before we had the housing crisis. Now, someone, um, for people, obviously, for the housing market to improve, obviously, interest rates have to be down a little bit. Prices of houses have to be reasonable. But they would have to be reasonably certain that they stand a chance to be able to get a mortgage in the first place, right? Exactly. So how does it work? How does the whole process work? They do their research a little bit, if they're smart, before they even come in to the credit union in the first place, but then take it from there. Uh, basically, we will usually meet with members. You know, a lot of our millennials will get information online, which we have through our website, so they can look at what to expect when you're buying a home, look at purchase calculators, there are credit tools, things of that nature to prepare and budgeting and such. Um, but usually when somebody's getting ready to buy, it's a really big investment. They like to sit down and have those conversations. So we work with them and take a look at their credit, their employment, their income, their comfort level, um, their budget and affordability, what they have saved, things of that nature. So we kind of take a, an entire look at their financial background and make sure that they're ready. Right, because first of all, um, 
For, uh, first of all, I would imagine is it's their biggest investment, right? The house is the biggest, then the car, then whatever else, the hot tub um, that we talked about in the first segment. Uh, but then they also have to not be, there might be a few people that you have to say, listen, you can't buy this castle, right? You're not ready for that. By the way, define what the age bracket of a millennial is. Oh, goodness. But it, we know it's on the young side, right? It is on you the got younger your, side. You mentioned baby boomers and Generation X and yep. blah, 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 down to millennials. So these are on the younger end, probably buying their first house, correct? Yes, we were looking at, you know, homeowners under the age of 30, you know, which is fantastic. They are saving, putting right. away money, being responsible, educating themselves in advance, doing a lot of research online, which is fantastic. So they, that means they're looking at a million houses, right? They are. They're using all the tools out there. Um, so they just come in, they are ready to go. And then, then that's where you take it over. But a lot of times it's a good idea for them to take some kind of classes just so they can understand the process. And again, for some people, in this case, the younger ones, because they don't have the experience, by getting a loan, a, a mortgage could be very daunting to some, right? Absolutely. And um, you, are you the person that kind of says, listen, it's, this is going to, we're going to be all right here, right? Absolutely. You know, so we look at each individual's financial picture. We also do seminars where people come in just to get information, you know, so we'll go through the home buying process. Um, again, budgeting, we really like people to practice, you know, be comfortable with that mortgage before they're obligated to it. What do you mean by practice? So we have strategies. It's a good savings technique that we offer. So if somebody decides that they think that they can afford $1,500 a month, let's say, for a mortgage, if they're living at home with mom and dad, we really recommend this. Put that $1,500 in the bank every month on the first without delay. Um, very quickly, you're going to have, you know, within a few months, you're going to have quite a bit saved, and you're going to know that you can afford it before you're stuck with it. So we like them to practice their payments if they can. Same thing if you're renting. Um, say your rent is 800 but you feel like you want to upsize in your home situation. You want to be, again, 1500 Put that extra amount of money in the bank every month. It's better to fine-tune your saving strategy than to be in a mortgage that you cannot afford. Yeah. So then they're also going in with confidence that they can do this and they have money set aside for down payment or reserves or anything that comes up. If your rent, if you're renting and you discover that your rent is more than what a potential mortgage could be, you should be buying, right? Absolutely. Uh, we do have people calling in. You know, either they're tired of paying somebody else's mortgage through paying rent, you know, they're not a homeowner, there's not so much flexibility in owning the home themselves, and they've gone through and been very pleasantly surprised that they can purchase a home for less than rent. But there are so many, you know, intricacies involved with what your mortgage could be based on things like what your down payment is or whether you do anything at all, whether it's a 30-year or, or all these little things that people might not be aware of, right? Right. There are many factors that would affect your mortgage payment, and we have a full product suite, so it's basically we can custom design a mortgage to fit a family's budget and needs for the home. When, when you uh, talked earlier about they do all their research and then they come in and, and they, they feel like they're ready, what is, what is the, that research that they should be doing before they even meet with you in the first place? It will make their life much easier, correct? Right, absolutely. Um, regarding the mortgage financing, the biggest thing is credit, you know, knowing, have you established credit, have you reviewed your credit score, have you looked to see if there's any issues on your credit that you didn't, you weren't aware of, do you have credit, you know, you kind of have to start somewhere, credit's such a big factor these days in lending, because um, most of it's automated, a computer's, you know, looking at a decision model to see if you're going to repay this loan, so credit's a very important factor, having the right amount, obviously, and not too much, not too little, um, but knowing your credit. You know, people do have access th these days to Credit Karma and other um, agencies. Which where they advertise can take a look everywhere. Yeah. They do, they yeah. do. They can also get their credit, raw credit data directly from the three credit reporting agencies. Um, so we recommend that they do that. You can get uh, one free copy of your credit report per year, per agency. And does that, that doesn't affect your credit, does it, by you uh, uh, asking to see it the no, one it time? Does not. And I, I would imagine that's also an opportunity for them to discover if there's anything on there maybe that shouldn't be that could be corrected so that their credit score could be improved, right? Absolutely. You do not want to find out that you have a credit issue once you're under contract to buy a house because you have very strict timelines at that point. So you want to make sure that any credit issues are handled before. I know every case, you know, you, you, it's in, on an individual basis, but these days, what is the, the appropriate down payment amount? It's a percentage, I guess, right? Yeah, it varies from time to time. We deal primarily in conventional lending, so we're looking for first-time home buyers is just three percent, uh, which is not a, a you know a large amount of money. Uh, five percent would be for subsequent purchases. So between three and five percent is what we're seeing these days. 
um, for down payment. What's nice with that is even if you are required to put 3% down, it can be a gift from a relative. So, you know, they're loosening up guidelines again. So it doesn't even have to come out of your pocket, technically, right? No, you can have a family member help you. What, what's the most common thing people are doing when they come in these days as far as them trying to get out? What's the most, the easiest thing or the common thing? I know that uh, people try to do maybe like no down payment, but then you're just paying it on the back end if you do it that way, right? They are. Uh, you know, there's some government financing out there where you are putting no money in or you're getting a second loan for a down payment assistant loan, so you're paying on your mortgage. You're paying on the down payment assistant loan. You're financing a funding fee for the government to have this loan. And um, it takes you a long time to have any actual equity in the property. You know, So it's great to get into that home right now, um, but it's a long time before you can take advantage of being a homeowner, take right. out equity for things that you want to do around the house. And that's the whole reason you would want to buy as opposed to rent anyway, so that you can have equity and not, like you said, pay a monthly amount and not have anything to show for it, right? Correct. And another recent change to government lending with the down payment assistant loans and no down payment is you would pay PMI, which is private mortgage insurance, which insures the lender in case of default. Um, traditionally, that would go away after a certain point in time where you paid it and you had equity. Um, recently, they've made changes with government lending where it's forever. You pay it as long as you have that mortgage. I was going to ask you how often rules changes happen you always have to keep up on new policies that happen what's going on oh gosh I mean, real estate lending it kind of flexes and breathes it's not you know a hard or fast rules and then it basically it's reactionary you know a lot of it is just to react how the mortgages are performing you know how Fannie Mae Freddie Mac are doing how government loans are doing um, so rules may be you know a few years ago you would have had to have three or four months of reserves and that's just money set aside you know, after you bought the house. Right. Now, what is that for? That's to cover you for emergency. Okay. So you have to verify with your lender um, that you're going to have money set aside for reserves. Now they've loosened up on that. The 3% rule, you know, when it was 3%, it had to be your own saved funds. You know, it couldn't right. come from any. So they, they tighten and loosen up, and they, you know, if there's areas of concern, they will tighten up in those areas, such as employment income, you know, self-employed income. There's Things that they take away I think those hard and fast rules you were talking about was coming from the aftermath of the bailouts and the, you know. It got very, very tight. Yeah. Um, and, and, the, and the ironic part about that is because the bottom fell out of the housing market, you could buy one for, you know, next to nothing except that the rules were so tight on it. It's almost like a catch-22, right? You had to be perfect. And then yeah. lending was so low, it wasn't helping reinvest good money into them. Right in the real estate market, so that didn't help at all. Interest rates were low. Are they starting to creep up a little bit now? They are fantastic right Is that, now. So they you're are still all-time low. Right low now, house prices, low interest rates. It's a perfect storm. So right now is a fantastic time to buy a house. Absolutely. All right. So let's let's take it from the, the top again. Someone is, in, they've been thinking about it, they're interested. What should they do? What should be the first thing they should do? look at their savings account and see what's in there first, right? You know what? Gather up anything you can think of. Usually when we set our first appointment, I'm like, you know what? Put together, if you've got income, assets, put that together. But most specifically, your hopes and dreams. You know, what you're looking to accomplish with this purchase, uh, where you're looking to move, things of that nature. And we'll just start from the beginning. We'll start, you know, usually people will say, as a lender, they're used to the lender telling them how much they can afford. We usually back into that. Everybody has different expenses. You know, even if right. we all made the same money, we're not taking home the same. We're not spending the same. So we work on building an actual mortgage payment that fits within each person's unique budget. Is there lots of real estate out there that's available now because of what the housing market was going through in the recent past? There is. I mean, each each area within Eastern Connecticut is. Um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Rebounding differently. Okay. You know, some are rebounding faster than others. Um, there are there are a lot of I don't want to call them junk houses, but there's a lot fixer of uppers. a lot of fixer uppers, you know, um, and inventory that has been bank owned and maybe not properly right. maintained. People should realize that banks don't want to own houses. That's not what they want. No. If it ends up that way, it's because of unfortunate circumstances. But they're not in the business to own houses. They want you to own the house, right? Absolutely. Banks do not want to own the homes. Right. If there's ever any issues, always talk to your bank. They're going to work with you before. You know, you have a house that they have to manage and take care of. So this is the time then. It is time to buy a house is what you're saying. And you should go see Barbara Zenjohn, the real the real estate lending manager at Core Plus Credit Union. Where's your office at, by the way? I am on 202 Salem Turnpike in Norwich, okay. right by Walmart. All right, uh, every, well, everybody's <laughs> by Walmart, so they should come and see. So times are good then, right? Times are great. Okay, come see, come see Barbara, come see Susan. 
and uh, good times are had by all. Uh, we're going to take one more short break and come right back. I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Stay right there. So that is our show for today. Uh, Barbara, you want to give out the website for Core Plus one more time? Sure, it's coreplus.org. Pretty simple. By the way, you can see this show and many others on our YouTube site. Uh, Bar thank you, Barbara Zenjohn, Real Estate Lending Manager, and Susan Dabrowski, the Director of Marketing for Core Plus Credit Union. We had a great time and we learned a lot today, so thank you. Thank you. So that is our show. Again, this show and many others on YouTube. Till next time, I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Take care. <laughs>